chapter 3, the book of Jonah, and verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, verse 2, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Jonah's vomited on the beach by that great fish that God prepared. Covered, I guess, in seaweed. He's been there those three days and three nights. And God's telling Jonah, go. My will needs to be done. Preach whatever it is that I bid thee to preach. And then we see that the, the Holy Spirit that, that will pe preach through him. If Jonah allows it. And I guess Jonah has no choice right now. And I like to add that, that these Ninevites... Uh, pray to a fish god. You could document this, I'm sure, in history books too. But we did a deeper study, and they pray to a fish god. So, so people see this man spit on the beach by a large fish created by God. And uh, verse 3 reads, So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was exceedingly great city of three days journey it takes about three days to to walk it and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown these are the words and that God bent to him uh, that he's given them 40 days if they don't turn from their ways and God will overthrow it and destroy it so the people of Nineveh believed God they knew that it was God speaking through Noah, uh, <laughs> Jonah, and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Verse 6, for the word came unto the king of Nineveh, the king heard about this preaching, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him. And covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. He's uh, the uh, uh, he's mourning. This is what they would do. They covered himself with the uh, ashes, sat in uh, sat in ashes, covered himself with sackcloth, and and this is what they did. Even the king, the uh, the highest, the lowest, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. This is the decree that they made. Not man, not beast, any of the flocks or the herds, taste anything, eat anything, or drink anything. Verse 8. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry. Here it is. And cry mightily unto God. Yet let them turn every one from his evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Cry unto God. This is what you're doing. They're repenting of their evil ways. Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his furious anger that we perish not? Basically, the king's saying that we got to do this. We got to pray. We got to repent. Verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil ways, and God repented of the evil that he had said that they would do unto them, that he would do unto them, and he did it not. What God said, that he'll overturn it in 40 days, but he, he had compassion. Uh, uh, he felt bad. Uh, he's seen that they really repented. And until this day, if you truly repent of your wrongdoing and ask God and repent of your wrong, the beginning of wisdom is to reverence and fear the Lord. And basically, they came to their senses here. Chapter 4 and verse 1. So God spared Nineveh. Chapter 4 and verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. Verse 2. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful God, slow to anger, and of great kindness and repentance, the of evil. 
basically with Jonah saying, this is, I knew, this is why I ran. These are the enemies of my people. I didn't want them to have salvation. I wanted them to be destroyed. And I didn't want to be the one that you speak through. And this is why I ran. I know you're merciful. I know you're gracious. I know it repents you to do evil. I know you're great and you're slow to anger. Why? Because Jonah knew that God created all man. And uh, and he didn't want him to, to be safe. Verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, take. I beseech thee my life from me, for it is better for me to die than live. Basically, I could sense in here, he's, uh, he'd rather not live, uh, he's saying. he. I guess he feels like a traitor. You know, God, your will's done, so take my life, he's saying. <laughs> Verse 4. Then said the Lord, Thou doest well to be angry? Question. God's questioning Jonah. Well, before we finish the book, he's we're gonna we're gonna see his uh, his point, God's point. That is verse five. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a boat, and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what will become of the city. Basically, he made himself a little shelter. He's sitting there over towards the east. He's watching what's going on. Verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a grout, G-O-U-R-D, and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of this grout. Basically, God made something grow. Excuse my uh, uh, my reading here, but what it is, it's something grew. God made something grew to shadow over him, to keep his head cool, that he'd deliver him from his grief. So God made this thing, and Jonah loves it. Verse 7. But God prepared a worm. When the morning arose, the next day, and it smote the grout, that G-O-U-R-D, that it would wither away. Basically, the worm ate it. This upsets Jonah. Verse 8. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vermin to the east wind, and the sun beat it upon the head of Jonah hard. That sun coming down hard, that he fainted. And wished in himself to die. There's Jonah going again. He wants to die. And said, it is better for me to die than to live. Not only what happened the other day where the Ninevites are uh, saved. That they stopped. But now even that comfort that I had is gone. Verse 10. Then said the Lord, thou had had pity on the grout that thing that he made for the which thou hast not labored you didn't even labor for it Jonah neither madest it grow you didn't even plant it you didn't water it which came up in a night and perished in a night you only knew it for a night it came up and it just, as quick as it came it went God's God's bringing his point to Jonah here he loves Jonah he's, uh, he's giving him a little Bible lesson here so He's going to tell him now in verse 11. He's reminding him, what did you want me to do? Verse 11. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? What God's saying there is there's over 120,000 persons here in Nineveh. I created them. These are my children. They don't know their right hand from their left hand. According, I mean, to the scriptures and all. And you want them that should perish? I think not. So God bless you. That was the book of Jonah. God bless you. So continue to read the word. Basically, God loves all his children. And we need to repent and turn from our wicked ways always. And God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. God bless you.